Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Well, kids, it's another episode of Drinking Bros. D'Anthony, how are you today? Shut up. <laughs> I don't know why you even ask me anymore. I shouldn't. No. I, I, sh- I shouldn't. At Just this assume point. that I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. Like I've, I feel like I've... I'm doing everything I can physically to let everyone know that I don't care. Okay, I don't understand why people don't get it yet. You've earned the right, <laughs> is what it is. You've earned the right for people to expect that you're a piece of shit. Right? Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like it. I mean, I put in a lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah. So it's like when you don't see the reward, it's it, it's. I don't want to say depressed, but it, you know, it, it wears on you over time. Sure, sure. You know, so. <laughs> This quarantine's wearing on people, man. Uh, it's been fun though because we get to catch up with like some of our favorite uh, people on mm-hmm. the planet. Uh, tonight's guest is Danny Warsnap, lead singer of Asking Alexandria, mm-hmm. and and uh, Danny Warsnap and like a harlot. Yes, exactly. Uh, he's he's got yeah many many he does a lot talents. of stuff. Yeah, he's the guy's brilliant. Um, not only is he brilliant, but he's also fucking hilarious. <laughs> He's been on the show twice, two or three times, not maybe four times, I think. And we also did the cruise with him, yep. which was uh, absolutely hilarious and disgusting. It's so weird to look back at that cruise now, that Drinking Bros cruise, and think that that would go on again. Like, have you thought I about that? I don't know what cruise lines are going to do, to be honest. Because, well, I, it's just like the people that they service typically are middle class, right? The middle class is getting hammered. There, there's right some, now. Uh, yeah, but there's some upper class cru- cruises as well. But why? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Knowing what, you know, looking at the way everybody's treating each other during these times, right? What, what's to make somebody go back on a cruise? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, you're very close to everybody all of the time. Very close quarters. You're sharing pools. Yeah. Hot tubs. <clears throat> buffets. Buffets. Yeah. I mean, like, you don't, you don't, there's nothing you touch while you're on a cruise that someone hasn't previously and almost assuredly, very recently touched or jacked I mean, off on. Well, yeah. Right? I mean, it's a hotel on a, on a boat. Yeah. That's what it is. So you can imagine what happens in a fucking hotel. I, we've gone into great lengths or gone on into great detail about the weird shit that we personally have done in hotels. Yeah. And, and I imagine feel, a cruise. I feel like I'm like a reasonably normal person for the most part. <laughs> so I know there's dirt bags out there doing weird shit. Uh, a cruise line is like you, you combine vacation plus shitty hotel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You don't have any respect for the room when you walk in. You're like, fuck this place. Like, I, as soon as I walk into a cruise ship room, I flip everything over. Yeah. Just because, like, I feel rage inside. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's something about a place being, like, kind of dumpy and making me feel rage. I, when I, as soon as I walked into the cruise, yeah, I think I just, I, in my room personally, I think I just spit on the floor. Yeah. Like, spit on the carpet. Yep. Just because I was like, well, I'm here and this place has is, is been yeah. used. 90 million times because <laughs> chances are if, if you're going on a cruise you either got married or you're vacationing or doing right, something yeah. so therefore hundreds of people have had sex in that room mm-hmm. most likely anal uh 69 you name it there's stuff on in that room. i mean i i own a number of mattresses yeah I'm not bragging or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> humble brag <laughs> Um, I know that like there's some stuff that you can do on them and it's okay and it'll come out and there's some stuff you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why Ghost Bed sells that mattress protector. Goddamn right they do. So Goddamn right just they imagine, do. You can imagine what's happening in a fucking on You a know cruise. what's funny? I got an email from Rich from uh, Ghost Bed. I'm going to pull this up because he's doing something with mattress protectors right now. Yeah. What, what is it? Let me see if I can pull this up. This is the rich that sent you all fucking food a week or two yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's great. Okay, so here's the deal with uh, Ghost Pets. It's our it's first sponsor, but uh, if you are a first responder or a member of the military, Rich says, I will send along a free protector. Mm. So it's totally free. Uh, to the first 10 people that email me. Um, and all you have to do is send an email to drinkingbros at ghostbed.com. So it's drinkingbros at ghostbed.com. The first 10 people who are uh, military or first responder, they just get free, the 10 free covers. So there you go. Uh, if you're a disgusting human, you need it. I can, I can tell you this. So we have, I've got two kids under the age of six. Yep. Uh, they <laughs> fucking destroy it with juice, chocolate, Dude, candy. I, I, like, you need a mattress protector more than you think i was actually surprised where i was like oh shit i spilled this 
all over my fucking floor and couch mm -hmm. this morning. Huge. And I'm a goddamn uh, adult. Yeah. So I can imagine what children are doing. Oh, man. Like when I was a kid, I would just piss my pants. You can't tell me what to do. No. Like it's like the first time I did it, if my parents would have just said, oh, yeah, we go in the bathroom. I'm like, oh, cool. I would have. Perfect. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but they told they yelled and said, you have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, no. No, I don't. Actually, You're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> if the physical laws of the universe don't prevent me from doing something I want to do, I'm going to do that thing. That's I sure don't. It is. I sure don't, my man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, go to look ghostbed.com forward slash drink of bros is obviously our title sponsor. 25% off everything in the entire store right now. And they're going to do it all throughout the quarantine, uh, most likely all the way through May, to be honest with you, because there's, there's a lot of folks going through some hard times out there. Um, but uh, the, the, the free cover thing is new. So mm -hmm. for the first 10 people who are military or first responder, just email drinkingbros at ghostbed.com, and they'll send you one for free. Uh, and as always, they got the 36 month pay as you go program. No interest on that. Um, so if you get that quarantine check and you want a, a mattress that'll knock it down to like 20 <laughs> bucks a month. Big fan. Uh, next up, we got Postmates. Postmates. Look, let's face it. Everybody's got Postmates. I wonder how many times the average everybody's person has Postmates. ordered from Postmates. I can't in the last, even like, imagine. Month. I, Just last month. I look, I'm one of those people, like I'm a people person. And I'll, I'll usually drive to the places mm -hmm. and, and talk to the people and all that stuff. And now you, you can't or they don't want to chat with you. Um, I, we ate, <clears> we uh, ordered food for the office last night for the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. And they were like, look, stay in your car. Don't come over here. And there was like signs posted and all that shit. And I was just like, motherfucker. Just you shit. should have got out of the car and stood on top of it like Michael Jackson at his trial. <laughs> <laughs> to start dancing and shit. Like, fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. If it wasn't raining, I would have. Uh, but everybody's using postmates and so they it was weird because they walked up to the window and they were like you know you can just use postmates for this and i was like oh, all right cool sorry i thought i was trying to keep your business going but uh no no worries i'll use postmates yeah and since you're doing that um with the promo code drinking bros uh you get a hundred dollars in free delivery fees and let's face it that's the only thing that, that jacks up the price there yeah is the otherwise delivery it's fees. just like being in a yeah. restaurant you just like going through the drive through <laughs> um you got to be a new user Mm. To Postmates, um, or just use a new username and email. Nobody well, cares. I mean, that is a u new user. <laughs> Technically, it is. Uh, Postmates, man, everybody's using it, and uh, <laughs> you might as well get free delivery fees with it. Uh, Drinking Bros is that promo code for a hundred dollars in free delivery fees from Postmates. Uh, last but not least, we've got Duke Cannon. Uh, look, Duke Cannon is is one that you guys asked for. Uh, over and over, and we were finally able to get a hold of these guys and say, hey, man, our audience loves you. They just want a promo code for this, mm -hmm. and it would be awesome because everybody uses it. Anyways, uh, so we have one at DukeCannon.com. Uh, the promo code is Drinking Bros. You get 15% off and free shipping. If you're new to this product, uh, which you shouldn't be at this point because it's the best body wash on the planet, um, it's a veteran-owned company that makes this. Nine bucks for one of these things, but it's huge. It lasts forever mm. um and they make four distinct flavors or scents if you will um i'm a big fan of old glory i know you use the uh, naval supremacy yep. look everybody in america i feel like uses duke cannon um and uh, a certain percentage of their proceeds every year go back to veterans charities and uh it's a veteran owned company they're the fucking best dude promo code drinking bros for 15 percent off at dukecannon.com uh, we love these guys, and uh, we're super amped that they're on. And, again, hit us up with the sponsors that you want uh, promo codes for, and we will literally just reach out to them, same as same as Duke Cannon uh, and these other guys, and, and try to get it for you. Um, the Kill Clip thing was the same way, man, with the yep. KillClipCBD.com. 30% um, off with the promo code Drinking Bros and free shipping. Everybody's drinking this shit, and it's 25 milligrams of CBD in every can. We will reach out, and we will try to get them on the show. Mm -hmm. um, so to Duke Cannon, we say thank you, and Killcliff, we say uh, thank you as well, man, because uh, we've reached out. They were receptive about it, and uh, they know that 80% of the audience is military and first responders. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to help with these massive deals. And uh, Duke Cannon, one of the best in the biz, promo code Drinking Bros, 15% off at DukeCannon.com. Uh, Jamie, why don't you get us into Danny Warsnap, shall we? Yes. I don't even know Welcome to Drinking Bros. We look. I feel like you you are a drinking. You you are a member of our show. It's it's Danny Warsnap, Hi. lead singer of Asking Alexandria, best known for yeah. being the president of Article Fifteen. I think. 
Yeah, that's that's, I, that's, that's I what I'm. That's, so. I, that's I, the first I ever heard of him. Yeah, that's how, that's uh, how I think of him. I don't know. I've I've noticed you guys have have, uh, have been a little more serious lately sometimes on these. I might well, ju- it might just be the clips I've seen, but I've, I've noticed you guys have been more serious. So I wanted to take the opportunity. I, I've been trying to be more serious too. So I wanted to start off with a little um, <laughs> something a little philosophical, a little philosophical. Oh, so boy. I was thinking about this earlier. Would you rather? And this is because I was I was drinking my protein shake earlier with water like a poor. Um, I was <laughs> I was wondering, would you rather take take a strong half of a of a empty protein that's been left out for a Ooh. week for a week, or mm. get a blowjob a day for life? Oh well, it'd be a blowjob a day for life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Am I being punked? What's, the, <laughs> what's happening? Because now I'm kind of feeling like I'm getting set up. It's a blowjob from a dude. Nope. Yeah, is it from a guy? No, it's just a. Uh, that, that was a. Uh, that was just a, a really dumb joke I wrote earlier. That I, that was funny for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you, you know what's funny, man. So it, it's not that we've been serious uh, or intentionally. It's in the time we're in right now, where where you feel like every conversation you have to talk about. All right, why are you here? What's going on? What's it like? I mean, before we went on the air, I said, hey, let's save it for the air because I actually wanted to ask you this. Like, For you personally, as a musician, where's your band at right now? And how do you guys get together to rehearse? Do you? Or are you stuck on Zoom like the rest of us in some weird fucking space where, uh, like, I have no idea where you are. You could be in London. You could be in Arizona today. Uh, I'm in Florida. Um all the rest. Oh, even worse. All the- <laughs> Florida's like a mix. It's a mix between London and, and Arizona. Yeah. yeah. It's like halfway between those two. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, the, rest of, the rest of the band are in Arizona. Um, and I was, I was supposed to have a, a tour in the UK in March. That got obviously canceled. And then uh, Asking was supposed to be going out in like, a, like five days. That's got pushed. Really? So there's really been nothing to rehearse for. And um I don't I don't I don't I don't want to terrify a bunch of people because this stuff hasn't really been put out yet, but it's been scary on our end because while everyone's postponing and trying to reschedule things, there's been a lot of kind of behind the scenes chatter. Um the the this it's looking like there very possibly is gonna be no touring or shows until fall of twenty one. So it's Oof. Wow. Is that is that real? Time. Well, we don't know, but that's what that's what's being said, and it's the it's kind of the situation everyone's trying to prepare for. Because I mean, that's the prospect of that is like cool. Um, that's an entire industry of people out of work for a year and a half now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and look, that that's that's one of the reasons why some of the shows have been a little more serious. Is this like um, everybody we talk to from every walk of life and profession, unless you have a podcast? Um, is preparing for the worst. Last night we did a live NFL draft special. One of our good friends, Benny Daniel, who runs a, a ticket service, um, like a you know, it's like a concierge for tickets. He told us last night for all sporting events that he was prepared that there will be no fans for all of 2020 uh, at the minimum, and they're they're writing that off for the year. And that that led me to concerts as well, where it's like, all right, great. Well, what if you are a musician and uh, like most musicians, mo- the bulk of your money comes from touring. Yeah. Um, unless you're a Taylor Swift or a Post Malone, um, you know, and your streaming numbers are fucking bananas, it comes from touring. And it's like, all right, great. When will that come back? And I, I don't see it anytime this year, but it's really surprising to hear fall of 2021. What was the reasoning behind that length of time? I think, exactly? I think in large, it's obviously, um, it's a much more close quarters kind of environment. Um, and I think uh, it's just not really high on people's priority list to where it's cool. Let's get this industry back going. Sports, obviously, there's a, there's a lot more advertising and um, uh, broadcast money. And there's a whole lot of out, just outside of that direct industry, there's a, there's a lot of the, of the outside stuff that's affected by that not happening. So they're wanting to get that up, obviously, much quicker. There's billi- well, tens of billions, hundreds of billions. I don't know how much, how many billions of dollars that are just there on the table while this can't happen. Yeah. And the music industry is very different. It's, I mean, it's, the money doesn't really leave our our industry. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand, but. Uh- does it put you in a position of getting together with your band saying, hey, guys, knowing that 
touring might not come back until fall of 2021. Do we get together and try to grind out fucking two albums in that time period? Do we put out a hundred songs? Do we, what's, what's the move if you're a musician at this point? Because um, I see musicians dropping singles left and right right now. Um, you know, just kind of here and there. Even the Rolling Stones dropped one last night. Uh, which was surprising where I was like, oh, shit. All right. I think this uh, climate is kind of more conducive to dropping singles yeah. than it is to dropping entire, like, <coughs> albums. Like an album or a pool of content or even a tele. Like some of the television series that you might normally see get spread out over the course of time, they just threw them all out. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the truncated timeline for The Last Dance, for example. Yeah. Like they, they just doubled up episodes. First of all, they moved it forward by what, six months? Yes. And then they doubled up episodes like there's two every weekend for, for four weeks or whatever it is, or five, five weeks. Five weeks, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? You, you produce. I think as well, and you, you know, you know more about that. I think, I think the industry's been moving that way for a long time already. Um, mm -hmm. and I, this, I, I think is going to be the kick in the ass it needs where it's just going to kill albums. There isn't really much of a need for albums anymore. People don't listen to albums. Albums are getting longer because um, there's kind of a percentage scale of people are only going to stream, just call it 20% 20, 20 of your songs. Mm -hmm. If you put out yeah, a 10-track album, I, that's you, you, you're not getting a, 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 as many plays and streams as if you're putting out a 20, 30-track album. All of a sudden, that 20% is still moving. Right. Yeah. And obviously yeah. that's different for every artist. Uh, but, but you guys got an album out. You were was that recorded pre all of this? Yeah. Um it comes out uh May fifteenth. We were asked to push it back and we said no. Uh and we're glad because now that obviously the entire scale's moved to it, it's like what we're gonna push it back two years. Um, yeah. yeah, fuck that. Yeah. So it's that's still coming out, but we're we're already uh we've already got our eyes set on new music and going into the studio where I'm actually going in tomorrow to record uh, something new and we're trying to get ahead of the curve and try and fight um, try and fight the current and and at least we're, we're looking at putting out some new music before this new album even comes out oh wow really yeah just to try and establish like hey this is this is what's happening because we also don't want to I mean with the the wonderful age we live in where people love talking shit on the internet we don't want the, al <laughs> the album to drop it obviously not have the same kind of uh, the numbers because we're not selling it on tour we're not playing it we're not pushing it we, we, we can't go out and sell it so we don't we didn't want it to to then turn around and we put out new music and be like ah this new album it sucks so they're just doing other stuff so we're like no 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 just put it out now and then it's everybody knows like hey they're just doing new stuff because they got nothing else to do right yeah because with, with you in particular i mean obviously you're our friend but we're also huge fans of you and your band um i noticed on the new album uh like a house on fire uh by the way you can pre-order that now you can um, you guys have dropped three singles, singles already. Four now. Um, four now. Oh, another, four. another one just. Yeah, that's came right. Out. The viol the violence. I forgot. The violence yeah. was the first one, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, by the way, love that song. Like a gigantic fan of that song. I've listened to it a thousand times. Thanks. I think you guys um, were among the first. So is that is that a strategy? Because I'm I'm going through the album here now, and you're right. It, it is four that you guys have out on on iTunes. Um, did they tell you to start dropping these one by one like this? No, that was that was kind of our game plan already going in. So it kind of set us up for success. We, the fourth one wasn't supposed to be out yet. That was supposed to be coming out in a couple of weeks, and we pushed it up to coincide with us being like, "Hey, our tour is pushed back. We don't know till when, but uh, just as a, I'm sorry, here's this." Yeah, yeah, because that dude, the violence song in particular, I feel like that was a smash hit right away. Yeah. And uh, fuck, man, I heard that over and over on Sirius XM on the drive into work every day. Um, yeah. Everybody was playing that song. Yeah, they've been they've been they've been progressively climbing faster and faster. And this new one, um, this new one's been I think the past three weeks the fastest climb, climbing single in the country, hmm. which is cool. Yeah, uh, man. Again, we're huge fans of your music. I know you know I follow you on Instagram and all that stuff, and I ask uh, you know I also follow the, the Asking Alexandria page. I know some fans have gotten at you for. You know, this not being maybe as hard as some of your other albums. Um, but to me, these sound like gigantic. Like when I heard the violence for the first time, I was like, dude, this would be in like the rock movie. Yeah. You know, of like him kicking ass and just fucking burning down a building in the background. Um, uh, what's been the reaction from it so far from from your end and how you're dealing with it? I, th I think it's really easy to. Uh, and th this is kind of the constant battle of everyone in, in our position. And I've gotten better at it. Um 
is to ideally not look at the comments at all. But I think you, <laughs> I, I, I think you look at them, and it's it's really easy to look at ten thousand positive comments and see the twenty yeah. the twenty negative ones and only read them. I think that's something yeah. we all do, and uh, it's it's trying to quiet that noise is the is the challenge. And I'm I'm getting better at it and trying to my my thing now is I sit and I, and I like everything positive and I ignore the bad stuff and I don't talk shit to them because then it goes to the top of the comments. <laughs> That's it true. just starts a fight <laughs> and I'm really <laughs> bored and I want to do it. Yeah, no worries. Um, but then, then when, I'm, when I'm scrolling through and I'm looking, I just see all the likes and then every now and again, there's one that doesn't have anything. And I'm like, okay, this, this ratios, are, I'm okay with this. Yeah, I like this song, "The Violence." I've, I've again, I've listened to it a lot as well. I'm kind of yeah. curious: is this something that you wrote, or you guys collaborate on, or no? We wrote everything. Lyrics. We, I, I wrote. What's that? I wrote all the lyrics for the for the album. So tell me what you were thinking with the hook, because uh, it's a pretty. I'll I'll read it so people can uh, know what the fuck we're talking about. But that's the best the way really to present lyrics, me. just it's to speak them. All they want, all, yeah. All they wanted was <laughs> violence to plant this their seeds and divide us. If they want the worst that's inside us, we'll bring on the violence. Now, what does that mean? I mean it's clear to me what it means, but I'm just curious yeah. what your thoughts are because you wrote it. I forget if we talked about it on the ship. That was, uh, it's, it's political. And it's, uh, it, was, it was kind of that, um, the, the, the divisive nature and um, kind of the, the malicious intent of the, the left media of... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. It was polarizing. We didn't talk about it in a lot of interviews. We were like, this is going to split the room. But uh, yeah. in my head when I was writing it, I was like, ah, this is CNN and the Clintons. <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> that, 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 that's what is going on. Like they're, yeah. they're trying to divide the country every single day, whether it's uh, politics or the pandemic or, you know, the, the fear mongering shit is what I hate yep. right now, where it's just everybody's going to die. Don't go out. Don't move. Don't do anything. Has your life changed at all? Um, no, I've been practicing for this for a very long time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're out of almond milk. That's pretty. Bad. I'm out, it's disgusting. Uh, uh, I, I mean, when when I'm when I'm home, obviously, I mean, I have this studio here, so I work out of this room. I'm in here all day. Um, mm-hmm. My trainer has his own gym, so I I just go there in the morning, come here, and then I pretty much don't leave this room. Um, so it's 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 been fine for me, but I'm. Outside of the canceling tours, not knowing what, right, yeah. what, what's happening, my day to day isn't really changing. Yeah, same with ours. I mean, look, we we come here every day. They they deemed our podcast essential and all that stuff. So it is. You know, we come here, we shoot all day long. Uh, we've doubled up on shows on every show. But uh, the you know the only thing is, I don't have a personal trainer who lives down the street that I can just hop on over to his house. So that's that's the only thing I really miss. But other than that, it's been pretty much business as usual around here. Yeah. I mean, um, you could I, jump. Hard, you could jump on we Amazon, cruise, and by the way. you could you could you could jump on Amazon and fit a fit a, a little gym set up in your garage. It's true. One would think, but it's not in, in your it's garage. On back order for about. Oh six, yeah, it is. All the gym equipment is fucked right now. Yeah. You can't order anything. Yeah, but, I mean, you could just use your children for weights. Yeah, and I have. I have just yeah. throw them yeah. To, yeah. like kettlebells, dude. Yeah, and you've got like <laughs> seventy five dogs now, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like you guys just keep collecting animals, and I, that's probably your wife's fault more than yours. No, it is. Maybe. It is. It is. She's going to go pick up rabbits. <laughs> right now? Uh, I, I don't know if it's today, but it's, uh, it's sometime this week. So do we have two Jareds, then, in our group? Is that what we're seeing? Like, people that just randomly go out and buy a bunch of wild-ass animals? <sighs> kind of. Jared, you, you know his fucking deal right now. He's got chickens and turkeys. and He's got a coli. Cats. <laughs> well, he's got a coli, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's dead serious. By the way, you know that, right? He's, he has know. the E. coli virus. Not yeah. now. It's and it's bacteria, not virus. Whatever, man. Uh, either way, there's a huge you, difference between a, those two. Another, another disease during a pandemic. I mean, it's fucking crazy. There's a lot of ways. The, the main ways you get uh, E. coli are from exposure to wild animals and their fecal material and meat. Yeah, like shady meat, uh-huh. which are two things that. I'm gonna, clearly I'm gonna go with the does. poop one. I'm gonna go with the poop one. Yeah, it's probably yeah. the poop. Yeah. <laughs> it has to. So just be careful. That's all we're saying. That's yeah. all we're saying. Oh yeah, no. Well, uh, I mean, there's only one of them that's allowed in here. Uh, the other ones shed too much, so they're not even allowed in here. Oh wow. Okay. How uh, many? How many goddamn rabbits do you have now? Uh, 
There's <laughs> one, there's one that's been here for a while. Um, and then she's picking up one or two more. I don't know. Oh, that's not that bad. That's not terrible. No. Uh, Jared's oh. got like 58 turkeys and yeah, roosters fuck that. and chickens. And yeah, well, the the they're living out like in the wood line now, I think. Yeah. So he's probably safe at this point. I doubt it. I doubt <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, man. They're still all just yeah. in his living room. <laughs> Yeah, they were they were in his living room, man. They were walking yeah. through the house like it was it was exactly what you expect. He's got no furniture, and he just <clears> the <throat> turkeys were walking through the kitchen. It's I was not at, all I, that weird. Like I was, I was at his in, house in January. On, it was I was with Bert Kuntz on the set of SEAL Team about a month ago, mm-hmm. a month and a half maybe. And their their showrunner has a goddamn rescue mini donkey that just was like with him all the time. Yeah, on the set at home in his house, like he, the, the donkey follows him around. He's just with him all the time. Which is, I mean, shit. It's emotional support yeah. animal, dude. Yeah, you could take that bitch on a plane now, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and, they, and many horse. women have, yeah. yeah. And even more so now, nobody's on a plane, so you can take a full yeah. fucking donkey on, dude. Yeah, take a full donkey. Sit that ass yeah. on a Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a duck, I think. Really? Yeah. What do you do with it? What do you do with I a duck get, in the house? I want a duck, and I want to get it like a platinum grill. Okay. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. And then like a big chain and shit. I want it to be like I I want to I want to stunt on people with my duck. Yeah, like a party duck. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Like have it on a. It's on a leash, but the leash costs like twenty five thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Of course. Like it's diamond encrusted and stuff. The only Super problem nice. is I've never seen duck teeth, so I've never seen them smile. I think they're they like tiny little implants. guys. You got tiny little razor guys. Yeah, put full like people sized teeth in it. Yeah. <laughs> Get him veneer. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like a fucking uh, used car salesman, <laughs> real estate agent or something with big giant teeth. I mean, how? Look, I don't give a fuck about ducks, man. But I, I'm sure Pete is going to come after me, but uh, we can do whatever we want to to ducks, pretty much. I, I feel like I don't understand the, like, if I can cut its head off, peel its skin off, and then cook and eat it, I should be able to do whatever the fuck else I want to to that animal. True. True. I mean, uh, theoretically, look, that, that's a long list. Yeah. yeah, you can get a you can get a duck for ten dollars. It would be awesome if you put seventy five thousand dollars veneers inside that duck. <laughs> I, I spent seventy thousand dollars in dental work on my duck. You think I don't take this seriously? <laughs> I start taking the duck to a nice butthole in that cat. By the way, yeah, beautiful <laughs> bee hole in that cat, dude. Um, a little guest, a special my, guest. Yeah. Well, what's the cat's name? That's agave. Oh, agave. Yeah. Are you planning on making tequila out of that cat? <laughs> yep. <laughs> of course your ass would have a fucking cat named agave. Yeah. I, d- d- so, I don't know. You're, you're either going to be proud or incredibly disappointed with me right now, but I have not had a drink of alcohol in 78 days. Are you serious? It wasn't supposed to be 78 days. I was taking a break. Because, you know, I did a second cruise. Oh, yeah. Oh, did no too long. way, dude. And I, you got, so you got back on a cruise ship again after I, that? I, it was the same fucking cruise ship. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't Donkey. It wasn't the same director, right? No, no, no. It, was, it, wasn't, the same, it wasn't the same director. This guy, no, I, I sent you a video of this guy. I know, he was yeah. way worse. But um, the, uh, the, the, the Indian guy who was our bartender um, that we were talking – that we were talking to about soccer and stuff and cricket, and he was teaching us all about all that stuff. He was on. Oh, that, the guy outside. Yeah, 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 he was on that cruise. He was th- he was there. So I was just sat with him. Um, but it's, <laughs> I got I went I went really hard the past couple of days on that, and uh, <laughs> and when, you have to when I got like, back what the on fuck land. Can you do on that? Yeah, ship? this one was a five day one. Oh, five wow, day, five on days. The same exact cruise ship. Five days at sea. So there's six. The sixth is coming back on land. Yeah, yeah. But it was I went I went hard. By the time I got back on land, I was like, I gotta take a break. I gotta take yeah. a break, and I was at that point. I was like, "Cool, I've got like a month and a half, like five, six weeks before I go on tour again. I'm just gonna take a break until I go back on tour." Did you Did you know it was gonna be the same cruise ship, the same exact cruise ship? No. And if so, you wouldn't have done that, right? They would pay me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they paid me like what Jared promised. <laughs> Look, we're all real good at organizing things over here. Yeah, yeah at the end of that, we we made zero dollars on the cruise. <laughs> Actually, I think I spent some, like, because I got a bill underneath my door, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, wow, I was unaware of this." We may have spent I, a couple bucks. Yeah, sh- drinking that much. I went wild as fuck, though. I mean, I don't remember a whole lot that happened. No, because I look back. That dude sent us all those pictures, and I'm looking back through. I'm like, "Oh yeah, 
I'm like, wait, that just happened. I shouldn't be re- recalling this. I should just remember it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I can't believe you you went back again on the same boat. Yeah, February first. So it wasn't long. It wasn't a long gap between them. Holy shit! Did they give you the same room and everything? No. No. <laughs> you seem disappointed by that. They gave us. They, well, they they. I think they heard about the room on the last one, so they gave us a smaller one to make sure that, uh, you know, their their more headline artists were not taken care of. That was good. <laughs> so what's that like as a band? Do you perform on the deck, or do they go to, an like, you know, one of the stops, and then you play on the beach there? Everywhere is, has stages. So there's there was some bands playing in, like, the the room we did the podcast in, Mm-hmm. There was a big stage uh, put on the on the deck, kind of over the pool where the pool was. All of that is now stage, um, and then there's there's like six other stages among it. Holy shit! Wow. Yeah, who else was on that cruise with you, uh, band wise? We had Hailstorm. Um, Miles mm. uh, Miles Kennedy was on there. Um, I forget the name of his band. Uh, I don't know. I forget. But uh, uh, they were on there. Um, of mice and men. Oh shit! Bad, oh shit! Really? Yeah. Bad flower on there. Um, one day, one day remains. Is that it? One day remains. I don't Miles, know. Miles uh, Kennedy. He's been in a bunch of bands. No, no, no. It's his. Uh, it's his bigger one. I forget what it's called. Uh, mm. It begins with an A. I think. Um, Alter Bridge. That's the one. Yeah. Yep. The one he's got with a uh, fucking homie from Creed. They could uh, Mark Tremonti. Mark Tremonti, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It'd be sweet if it was Scott Stapp, you know. Yeah. What just... do you think Scott Stapp's doing right now? <laughs> like literally right now at two fifty nine p.m. Eastern Time, yep. Friday, April the twenty fourth. He's right? reading uh, a Bible right now. No. With arms wide open. I bet. I don't think he can read. Uh he can. You sure? Yeah, I think Stapp's smarter than the average bear. You know. Um... I think Stapp. I think Stapp gets down. Are you going to call him, Danny? Are you okay, calling Scott Stapp right now? No, I was just confirming before. I was like, I don't think he's doing anything. I'm pretty sure he died. So I was Googling it to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been thinking of someone else because apparently he ain't dead. He's a, he's a, he's No, he's alive, he dude. Is still the make, other guy. He is still making headlines right now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's the other guy from uh, it's the other Scott. Scott Weiland, he died. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but that was years ago. Stone yeah. Soul Pilots? That's who you were thinking of, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In my head, I was like, because the first thing I thought he was like, probably heroin. And then I was yeah, like, wait, didn't that's, he that's die it. from heroin? Scott, Stapp, Scott Weiland. Scott Stapp was more into uh, banging Waffle House waitresses and shit. But didn't, he, didn't he get caught like trying to fuck some Waffle House waitress? It's a similar drug, video? Dan. It's a similar drug. Yeah, it is. That, some, some might say more dangerous yep. than heroin. Caught beat the rush. Well, I mean, I guess it depends <laughs> on what you consider dangerous. If you consider your... Uh, Scandinavian wife chasing you down the street with a fucking golf club. Yeah, banging Waffle House waitresses can be problematic. Yeah. Hey, sure. Here's how dangerous it is. Can you imagine what half of with arms wide open is worth? <laughs> That's pretty Christ fucking Lord. dangerous. <laughs> they got a big ass catalog, guy, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's loaded, dude. Yeah, he's loaded. If he wrote it, you know. I mean, even still, those those mechanicals. That was when people bought albums. Yeah. That's right. Do you ever look back at those days and be like, fuck, man, we just missed it. We just, well, in the beginning, we just caught the tail end as it was fizzling out. So we got to, we got, we obviously didn't sell many of the first album because we were a brand new band. The second one, we managed to be like, oh shit, we made some, we made some, we pushed some numbers. We like broke, yeah. we broke top 10 on like the pop charts and stuff, like the the, the proper billboard charts. Um, I think we, we lost out to Adele. Which is uh if you're gonna if you're gonna lose to someone, yeah, she's the best. Let yeah, it be the great. record breaker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then but from then on, it's 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 all it's all shit. Uh, Green Green Day, one of the biggest rock bands in existence, just sold like twenty four thousand copies of their new album. So it's the bar really? is much lower than it used to be. So what's your what's your strategy then? I mean, I know you guys, I know you guys and others are putting out content more in uh, I mean, obviously streaming, but like. The, not just the the way you're putting it out, but the the marketing strategy and shit like that. Uh, I'm just gonna get a part time job at GameStop. I think um, that's <laughs> that's when the music industry's going. Uh, no, we're just we're just trying to pump out as much as possible. Uh, if we were all in the same city, 
it would make life a little bit easier because we could do videos and stuff. Um, like well, you're working on that style. anyways, right? You're working on getting out to AZ. No, 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 no. No, I was going to... I've, I've had this weird feeling, and I'm, I'm not proud of it, but I, I just have this <laughs> overwhelming urge. I was like, I need to... I need to go back to England just for a, a little bit because I feel like creatively something needs to reset and my body's just telling me that's where I need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found I found a spot that I can rent for like three months. So I'm, I'm going to do that when obviously we can travel and things are open. But oh, uh, cool. I'm going to do that. And then who knows what I'm going to do from there. It's impossible. So what do, what do you well, – yeah, what do you do when, when you get a creative whim like that and say, all right, I want to go create in England? Do you bring your whole setup or do you rent studios while you're over there? Um, I have, I have a few options. I can't bring all of this, uh, but I've, I've, I've kind of been piecing together ideas of how to do it. Um, and, and there's a lot of producers that I would love to go work with because there are some, there are some incredible studios and incredible producers out there. But, uh, in, in an ideal world, I have a compact rig that I can travel with mm. and then just buy some shit there to build it out so that I can get some solid production going, but. It'll be a very how's the, rig. How's the rest of the band react to that when they're like, fuck, man, our lead singer wants to go to England and we're, on, we're all in Arizona? Are well, they not, cool or does that cause fights? We're not doing shit for you. <laughs> so everyone's kind of like, <laughs> if you're going to do it, now's the time. That's true. Barnes Courtney's doing the same thing. He's just chilling in England right now. Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you ever met Barnes Courtney by any chance? I haven't. I, I only, I'd, I'd heard of him when I saw he was on the show, and I was, I was watching some of his stuff. It was cool. I feel like I've heard his name. I feel like someone was telling me about him recently. Like they'd seen his show. <laughs> yeah. His, yeah, his new album is incredible, by the way. It's, uh, it's called 404, and uh, him as a live performer, like that kid is stage diving, you fucking name it, at, like going for it every single show. I feel and, like um, some of my guys just saw him in Vegas a, a, little, okay, a couple months ago, and I think they told me mm-hmm. about him. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's fantastic, but he's over in uh, in London doing the same thing where uh, he's kind of creating music there and then you know waiting to get back out there. Yeah, if you go over and you guys, uh, we'll put you two together. You Definitely. guys will be long lost best friends for yeah. forever. Yeah, he's uh, he's a fun guy. I dig it. Yeah, okay. uh, are you doing any fun covers these days, dude? Um, I did. I did. Um, I, I did a recording of. Uh, I saw a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> is it out yet? Yeah, is that, is that on I've, your person? That, that was so surprising that my cat just fell into the toilet. Um, <laughs> no, I, I haven't. I haven't finished it. I'd done my vocals, and I was about. To, I, I was about to get to work on the verses, and um, Brandon uh, Sala from uh, the band of Treyu, he'd hit me. And he was like, "Hey, we should do something together." I was like, well, I'm working on this if you want to get on it. And he was like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> when when he's offering to get involved in a song during a quarantine, when you can't go in studios or fly anywhere to travel, I'm assuming he's got some way of recording himself. He sent me vocals that he's just recorded on his phone. <laughs> so I've kind of been <laughs> figuring out what to do with the song. Because like, I don't want to be like, yeah, that, that ain't going to work, dude. I know there isn't an alternative. So I'm kind of torn. It's like I've got two choices. I can either make him look bad and I just keep my vocals on there. They're recorded in a recording studio with all the fancy stuff. And then just all of a sudden a cell phone vocal comes in or make me look bad. And I do it on a phone, too. So I've I've just got to decide. Well, (laughs) can you uh, give us a little bit of it now? Uh yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I do. I do want to put him on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? I, I must have it on me somewhere. <laughs> I just, I need this for the weekend. Yeah, if you were singing vocals. <laughs> By the way, who's ever is out there? Can you just kill the lawnmower guy? No, I mean take take Dan's gun and physically blow his brains out. <laughs> Go out in the streets and just say, "Dude, yeah, we need ah. some. Uh, we need some grenades. I think or flashbangs." Yeah, flashbang is not going to kill you, but it'll flashbang is going to be awesome, dude. It's it's not awesome when you get hit with a flashbang. I bang. think between last night and today, this entire week, I, I guess because we've been recording so much, we mm-hmm. hear so much weird shit that we never hear before. Yeah, remember that train last night? It was, it was for like forty five forty five minutes, minutes. Yeah. and I was like, I was unaware that there's some form of railway here. Oh uh, uh, yeah, this is real hard not to <laughs> Forty minute train.
<laughs> I'll send you everything I got. I'll, I'll send it over to you. Oh shit! <laughs> I was definitely not expecting that. Why don't let's let's make a music video of this where uh, you guys sing and we all fucking dress up like tigers. Yeah, oh. and just walk around acting weird. Yeah, yeah, but it, but but, but kind of kind of do the setup like the front of that old Michael Jackson album where I'm just wearing like white <laughs> linen pants. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Take a look. All of that. <laughs> By the way, I was looking up Scott Stapp. It turns out he's been living in his car. Oh no, you're kidding! Killing it. Apparently, in 2014, he put out a fucking like 15, 16 minute video on Facebook saying that he was living in his car and had no money. How is that possible? How do you blow the arms wide open money? You know? Waffle House waitress. <laughs> <laughs> they got expensive got kids. <laughs> <laughs> he owns the With Arms Wide Open Foundation, which I'm told is a foundation dedicated to, to taking care of all the children he created on the road. Yeah. So. I, you know, I want to say I saw him on like Entertainment Tonight maybe a year ago. Saying he'd, he'd gotten clean or sober or whatever, but I didn't know how bad it was. I don't know, man. I mean, how fucking fucked up do you have to be to be banging Waffle House waitresses? And that's not a judgment to Waffle House waitresses. I just feel like... Not at all. You know, they're not when exactly you, the most it's when you attractive roll With arms wide open, it's, you, can, you can shoot for a higher caliber of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Tiger Woods was banging Waffle House waitresses too, so it's like... I think it's about maybe the, the Maybe there's something it. to it. Yeah, dude. But couldn't you, like, honestly hire somebody to be an assistant and be like, hey, part of your job duties is to, to suck go. my dick. <laughs> I was about to say, go fuck is Waffle that House waitresses. Wait, you, you go collect them. <laughs> <laughs> I, to I told I with like someone once. I feel like there some kind of organization to keep athletes and musicians out of trouble. Yeah. And what they do is they provide prostitutes or whatever, drugs. Well, I... But they, every, there's always somebody standing by with Narcan, you know what I mean, to hit you. Just yeah. I toured with a guy once, who I'm not going to name for obvious reasons by the end of the story, who um, he, had, he had dancers. Like, they had, they had dancers within the show. Mm -hmm. And he had these two dancers out. And we found out throughout the course of the tour and by the end of it that within their contract, they had, like, between them, they had to rotate on... Giving him hand jobs and blow jobs within their contracts, like it was part no of the agreement way. going into it. Wow, that's uh, that seems dangerous legally speaking. I, mean, I yeah, know, <laughs> but you just contractually admitted to prostitution. I don't know how that works. <laughs> but I think it's awesome. That'd be a great thing if if, the, if you could have that in your writer. That'd be the best. I'm oh, into it. I feel like also anyone taking that job hasn't thought it hasn't thought that contract through. Like, dang, you've just you've just that that's not going to hold up in court. <laughs> Excuse me, Judge. Uh, she did not give me a blowjob every other That's day. That's a Judge Judy a situation job. right there. Or a Judge Joe Brown, one of those two. Yeah. No nonsense, Judge. Like, hey, get over there and suck his dick. Can yeah. You hear that little fucking five foot one <laughs> Jewish lady just screaming at this poor woman to suck his dick. You, you got to be like a Russian police officer, <laughs> stern but fair in, in a situation like that. Because here's the thing, Danny, if you're really good at hand jobs. Uh, you can get that over with pretty quickly. Like, that's, yeah. you know, and if you're really good at something, you should be getting paid for it. I feel like that's, I mean, that's the, that's the lesson we can all take from this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if, look, if you love what you do, you never work a day <laughs> never in your work. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, the, the audience loves your covers of Chumba Wumba. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I have not I have a new one for you. Okay. Uh, that I would I would love for you to cover. Um there was a, a singer by the name of Falco. Falco uh, who sang a song called Rock Me Amadeus. Jesus Are you familiar Christ. with that? Song? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, do. That. I would love to hear that. Here's why. So we had a uh we had Mike uh, Ritland on the show mm -hmm. and he's a dog trainer, canine dogs or whatever, and uh we were asking him what the most common names were and he's like you know, we get we get a lot of Falco, like the name Falco. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, the dogs are coming over from Germany and they've been pre-named by somebody. And apparently Falco, the singer, was huge back then. And I told him, I said, look, Falco died tragically in a car accident after having maybe the greatest song ever recorded uh, with Rock and Armadillo. <laughs> so 
Ball's in your court on this one, but uh, I would really like to hear that. Why aren't there more someday. dogs named Hasselhoff if that's the case? There, there probably is. Oh, they, they just, they, yeah. they, 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 ain't they, share, they ain't sharing they, those. They're keeping them. They're hoarding them. There's that's a, true. They're there's probably, a German there's, there's Jared. A fucking army of Hasselhoff dogs yeah. over there. Oh, yeah. There's They've a, all got, like, chest hair and shit. There's a, there's a, <laughs> a, most dogs do. Yeah, but I mean, like, they've got more. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a Dutch Shepherd, but it has, like, Greek man-style yeah. pubic chest hair. You know what I mean? Like, black, stringy chest hair. It's weird. Less collar, more chain. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's call him more chain. <laughs> Trying to get used to these zooms and all this shit too has been a real fuckery for me. Uh, throughout this, people go in and out, voices go in and out. So if we're if we're overlapping each other, know that it's from the zoom itself, and also know that we don't care about your uh, complaints. So don't complain or or feelings. Yeah. yeah, your feelings are meaningless to us. I'd had this idea beforehand that I'd forgotten about until right now. That I, that it <laughs> was another one like my opening joke where I was like, "This will be funny for me." And I was like, I was like, I was like, I'll go into it pretending there's a lag. So just wait, like, like when they're reporting on the news, pretend there's a lag. And then as soon as it is like acknowledged, do something to fix the lag. But now there's a reverse lag, which doesn't exist. And I just start yes. answering questions before you're done asking them. <laughs> and then leave it to the audience to figure out what the fuck just happened. I like yeah. that. That's a good choice. <laughs> yeah, because on this Zoom right now, on one side, I can tell you what's going on right now. Uh, it I'm is masturbating for oh. it in case you're talking over the other person. Yeah, um, it is. Mm. It is pausing when it's like, "Hey, man, real conversations overlap." That's no. The, the way we communicate is that we all yell at each other at the same time at the top <laughs> of our goddamn lungs. And yeah. I want some technology to, to decipher it later. That, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I guarantee. I am an American. That's the new thing on Zoom. We can also give each other filters. Have you gone there yet with filters on yourself? Yes. Uh, yes, I have. Um, I don't know if I can do it with this camera. Can I do it with this? Hold on. I did, a, I, I did one a while back. Because um, being, well, being on, on, on this podcast in particular has me feeling just a little... Um... <laughs> <laughs> You've got to watch the video show now. Danny was just in San Francisco. <laughs> And it looked like a beautiful day in San yeah. Fran, right, was, right next to the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, beautiful well, day. <laughs> still, but, oh, man. Mm. I want that image freeze for life <laughs> of you in San Francisco. Flip back to that one more Just, time. <laughs> if, you, if you can. It's <laughs> <laughs> not getting my hands. This isn't going to get photoshopped into anything weird, so that's okay. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they have a filter that makes it look like you've showered and are wearing clothes, because I could use one of those. I just fuck, we all could. <laughs> I did that for the first. <laughs> this is bad. I just did that for the first time this week before this. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? Matter. What am I showering for? My wife's already married me. She can't. She she literally can't leave right now. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, your, your wife and your kids like can't go anywhere nope. for yeah. me, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Like you're getting, you're starting to get really arrogant about the how bad you smell. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Dude, exactly. yeah. Shower. Ah. You know. Ah. You know. Hell no. You know how confident I am that she cannot leave right now. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh oh. Does he have a gamer chair? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, because I have to sit in it for hours a day. She. <laughs> <laughs> wow Danny's just shaving live on camera right now uh, just but gonna I'm just gonna leave it, but out. I'm just gonna leave it there yeah <laughs> where's she gonna go <laughs> <laughs> where's she gonna go she's she's just she lives with this guy now I feel I feel like the only thing you can do now the next flex which I like to call it is to uh, get that, get a picture of yourself like that, put on a T-shirt and wear it. Yeah, but with but with this, wear your own face. Yes, exactly. But but with this, <laughs> oh, that looks crazy. <laughs> I feel like, uh, oh, oh my god, dude, that's amazing. <laughs> who's the, who's the other Wolverine guy from the X Men movies? The guys who uh, saber tooth. Yeah, I feel like him. Yeah, very saber toothy. Man, if you're not watching on uh, at home and just listening to the audio show, Danny just took a fucking full razor and uh, shaved right down the middle of his beard. Yeah, well, he did right down the middle. Oh my god! It's Sometimes you got to do you got to stunt on people, and that's what he's done. <laughs> god, it's 
so he's, he's, fucking funny. He's dude. both stunted and flexed at the same time. <laughs> stunted, and like stexed. stunting and flexing. You know, you know what those are individually. You yeah. know those words. Yeah, but the, I don't know if the audience is so stunting is like showing off how cool you are. Like you know, yeah, like clout. Yeah, right. But flexing is more like you're trying to show that you're not just great, but better than someone else. Right? <laughs> flexing on you. To kind of, and that's what he's done both at the same time, which is very impressive. <laughs> this, this look, by the way, is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Are you seeing it for the first time in your camera? Yeah. Yeah, looks, I actually think it looks great. <laughs> it, looks, it looks amazing. The, 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 the best thing is she's just like out in the house somewhere. And when this ends, I'm going to go out there. And this this will be new. For her. <laughs> <laughs> you should give the cat the same facial hair. And then carry, just carry the cat under your arm out there like, hey, we got haircuts. See you later. Quarantine, you know? Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> just give the cat like a reverse mohawk, a no-hawk, where you just shave <laughs> no the middle. Hawk, yeah. You leave all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> what other fun backgrounds do you have there besides the San fun? Francisco? We haven't been able to, to, to test out any of these guys. Okay, we have... We have uh, I'm just... I feel like I'm in that movie Ants now, or A Bug's yeah, Life, yeah. Oh, yeah. or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Because listen, these these podcasts they're are always always amazing. Some would say they're out of this world. <laughs> you, you, I feel like you should have children soon because you're getting really dad. <laughs> I like it. No, Danny, I like it's it. Creeping. I love punny it's, jokes like this. That. This like quarantine was made for my humor. Um, we got some beautiful Northern Lights going on. Go ah, yeah, I, really want to do, yeah. I really want to do mushrooms and go watch the Northern Lights. By the way, the reason that happens is because of radiation from the sun coming mm. through our atmosphere being bent by the magnetic field generated by the Earth spinning in the nickel core. Great. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one, that's, a, that's a fun flirty one, though. I like it, Dan. What else you got? That is. We are, and then, and then the, the other one we have in here, if you need a little bit of escape, sometimes I come in here and just turn this on and leave it. Pretend I'm not quarantined at all. Just taking a nice uh, little vacation, although it's, it seems quite quite windy wherever this is. The storm is yeah. kicking. We had a we had a, a tornado touchdown last night by the house. Did you really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to be interesting for all this quarantine shit. Is when tornadoes and hurricanes come in heat. I don't think anybody's prepared for the heat. Well, when California already really got butt fucked this weekend. Oh, they did. Yeah. What? Why? There was some power outage somewhere in in Southern California, and it was pretty warm. Oh, and that's, God. I mean, but that's something new for California. They've been doing the rolling blackouts for years. Now. They have, but you haven't been quarantined. Yeah, but I mean, what the fuck are you going to do? I mean, people are just going to the beach, apparently. People are breaking the rules and going to the beach in California. That's what I've heard. I would. I would. Uh, how, you, you're in Florida, so the beaches are open, right, Dan? Uh, they were closed for a little while, but they're reopened now. Um, so I wasn't, being, I, wasn't, I wasn't being rude in email, and I was figuring out how to, uh, how to just do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> yes, dude. Jacked as fuck. <laughs> there was a picture. I'll get our editor to put this up in post. Um, but there was a couple of pictures you sent me. Yes. But one of them. One oh, of Jared. Them, yeah, one of them was on Jared's birthday a couple of years ago, and you're fish hooking him. Yeah. Or you're just putting your finger in his mouth. What's so, that about? So bo- both, the, uh, both of the two pictures, it doesn't matter which one you use, they were both taken on the same day. The, the, that was a day that we uh, I, I'd flown out to Salt Lake City. We were doing some stuff for Article 15 clothing. And um, that night we got drunk. We got drunk. Uh, and um, Jared, uh, I don't know if he's ever done this with you guys. Uh, he, he likes to make stupid bets. And there was, there was a movie called Ready Player One. You guys remember that movie? Yeah, uh, yeah, the book was great. The very, that's what he said, too. Uh, the very, very expensive movie they made that tanked. That he bet me yeah. he bet me $1,000 that it would make a billion dollars first week. Whoa. Because of whoa, the book. Whoa, 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 what? Yeah, That's I like know. Star Wars money. Shocker, he lost that bet. Now, yeah, he lost that really bad. Super bad. And now the, now the point of, uh, of this and doing it on air is Jared still owes me that $1,000 from years ago. <laughs> Shit. So I just, wanted, I just wanted to make it public and put it out there. Uh, what, what was the bet exactly going to be? So was, ju- was it just the money or is there any was, sexual favors involved? Uh, uh, well, he paid up on that. Um, no, I th- it was, <laughs> come on. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Uh, it was. It was just a thousand dollars, and he never paid me. I've brought it up many times, so I feel like I've just got to go public now. <laughs> Jared, you have the uh, opportunity to respond here, my man. It was a huge book, and I think everybody was. Uh, uh, 
it's know. a it's a great book and it had so much 80s pop 80s and 90s pop culture that it should have made that amount of money but they didn't do like they the Obviously, they fucked it up because yeah. it did not do well. It was, it, was, it was Steven Spielberg. It was a gigantic book, and I, some people just said it couldn't be made into a movie. But I may, It may not be able to be made into a movie without crossing into the Uncanny Valley because there's so much CGI you would have to do to make that real. Right. So I, don't, I just don't think we're there technology. I thought, I thought a lot of it was that Tron had done about as much as you could do in that realm when they made, that, when they made the, the new Tron movie. That it was yeah. this was just kind of like oh, I just did another one of those. Cool. Yeah, the visuals weren't that impressive. No. The storyline to me is what was impressive, not the visuals. But Hollywood obviously took a great storyline and wanted just to do visuals. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, they changed so much shit about. <laughs> it's the same thing that happened with uh, what's that goddamn book? Um, shit, I have to look at that. Uh, every book has been ruined well, by yeah, Hollywood. Right. Um, yeah. But Danny, uh, to, to that point, like you take Hollywood shit. You know, Hollywood's all closed down. Yeah. So you're not gonna have movies and and all that other shit for a long time either. No. Like, who's going? Who's going back to the theaters right now? You know, who's gonna race to go back into the theaters once they open? Well, actually, so I saw. I actually only saw this last night, and it's exciting for me because I I I, I love kind of slightly cheesy comedies. Um, they're doing a new Parks and Recreation episode. Yeah, I saw that. But they filmed it. This they, they filmed it all from the like in their individual respective homes. But it's like oh, I, I, I didn't even heard about that. That's interesting. I don't know. If, I don't know how that's going to work out. No, but it's going to be. We'll see. It's going to be. Inter- I feel like it. It should have been an internet thing. They're TV airing it, but it, I feel like yeah. it should have been an internet thing. Yeah, well, look, they're 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 completely out of content, and the networks have shut down. Yeah. We had uh, AJ Buckley from SEAL Team on CBS on the other night, and and they just stopped the last episode. They were like, "Hey, we're pulling you off set, and that's it. Um, you know, we're all done. Whatever, whatever shot is going to air, and after that, we'll call you when we're ready to to get back going." But, yeah, I mean, they cut them off. They were they were one day away from starting the filming on the last episode yeah. of the third season, and they just shut it all. Down. And they just shut it all down. So. <laughs> Uh, when that's going to get up and running, I have no idea, man. Uh, truly. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Somet- uh, sometimes wild. sometimes I, I wonder, because I, I watch a lot of movies and a lot of TV, and I, I I genuinely very often wonder when I'm watching movies, I'm like, I wonder what a Ross version of this would look like. God. I, you know how many times I get that a day? It would be a better world. It, is what it, would, be. it would be a very fun world. A lot more casual racism. People had, yeah, I mean, people would grow out of getting offended real quick. Oh, dude, because I, <laughs> I was like looking back on it because they've put up a lot of these movies since there is no content. A lot of the studios have put up a lot of my movies on like Amazon Prime and shit, um, just to stream. And uh, like FDR, American Badass, Pool Boy was on there. And somebody hit me up after watching Pool Boy drowning out the fury, and they were like, "Dude, you're in blackface in this movie." And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and, they were, and I was like, you know the other one? I was in blackface as well. And they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, I mean, that was comedy. We used to make aggressive yeah. comedies back in the day. And it's not even back in the day. The Office did it. Yeah. yeah uh, the Office. Uh, uh, 30 Rock did it. Robert Downey Jr. did it. Like, that point, was right? fine. No one had any complaints. He went See, full Thomas black Halliday. everything. Yeah. Yeah, he did look. They, everybody was doing everything, but um, it's funny looking back at it now and what everybody's offended at and what's, uh, what the state of affairs is in the world and the cancel culture and a lot of this shit you just can't make anymore. Um, so that, that'll be a yet another thing to, to come out of this as well is, hey, man, what happens on the other side of this? Because you're going to have to make shit even safer mm. to try to get people out. Um, comedy is out the fucking window. I don't know. I feel well, like we'll it, I feel like it might go the other way. I think people have been. Well, I've I've, I've heard apparently the uh, the whole overly sensitive people are kind of having a, a second coming because at first it was everyone was preoccupied by trying to stay safe and now they're bored so now they're getting back into it. But I feel like it's people have been away from just the whole tension of it for mm-hmm. months now. And I think everyone's going to come back and be like, ah, okay, we don't have time for that anymore. We've there have been like an actual problem now. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, but you take today, Joe Biden gave back. Louis C.K. donated uh, to his campaign a lot of money. Joe Biden was like, no, take this back. I can't, I can't accept your money. You were the one who jacked off in front of people. So I gave the money back. The creepiest candidate, too. Yeah. That's probably why. That's I'm super sure on there are brand for less, him. <laughs> I'm sure there are much more unsavory people who have donated to Joe Biden. But that one is like, well... Like, if you're out there uh, saying 
racist shit. You can't have a racist dude donating to your campaign. You know what I mean? Right. And if you're out there sniffing women and rubbing their shoulders, <laughs> you probably can't have a guy that's been pounding off in front of people in public. Yeah, probably pull back the, the reins on that. But it's, it's one of those things where if there was a guy who was probably jacking off in front of women, it's probably Joe Biden. Yeah. Well, maybe, yeah, behind, so him. maybe behind him, just creepy. Through, through his pants. Oh, that would be great. Got, a, got, a, got one of the old uh, holes in his pocket and stuff. <laughs> He's just carrying popcorn around, like yeah. a large popcorn around all the time. The, ins- the inside <laughs> of his left. Hey, Joe, come on. <laughs> the inside come of his right left there. pant leg is, is, is lined with plastic so you don't get the old messy leg. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. That's a nice technique. Yeah. I, the one, that's the one thing I miss about the movie theaters is the uh, <laughs> hole in the, bottle of the, the bottom of the popcorn. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But the old. Uh, <laughs> The old, right up in there. The old dangling uh, right through. It's salted. Yeah, whoopsie. We'll, we'll <laughs> Sorry, the bottom just got really soggy. I didn't even know. <laughs> I was just holding this on my lap. Um, but yeah, uh, so Biden gave the money back, and uh, eh, that's kind of where we're heading. I with think all there's going to be some kind of rebellion at some point. I hope so. Like, it's probably going to be what he said. It's going to be a combination of what you guys are saying. It's going to be people are coming back. And then some of those super offended people are going to be like going back to being professionally offended by everything. Mm-hmm. And then everybody else is going to be like, man, we just came out of this whole shit. Shut the fuck up. The, right? And all of a sudden, maybe some comedies get made. They just maybe. they just need oh, exposure so. therapy. That's what they need. Yeah. Just sit them in a room. Give them all the wrong pronouns. <laughs> just let them lose their fucking mind for a week. <laughs> do you remember that? Do you remember that episode of South Park where he they had to go to that racism tolerance thing? Yeah. That was like, he was so excited at the end of it because they were just yelling racial slurs. At him the time. He was like, he wanted to go. He's like, can we do this again? <laughs> hey, speaking of which, I was thinking about South this the other Park. day. Where is South Park right now? I don't know. This it, is it, like, you think they would be able to do what they do without? This is their you know, time. Yeah. This is like the, the, well. The, the problem house. is they've got to send it off to animation houses, so uh, you know you can't have more than ten workers at the same place and and all that. Right. But so. the usual day turnaround, just make it a week. Yeah. This is I, like look, we, we need, for we need something these I know. days. And we're not we're not getting it. Well, you might get uh, something in the sports world later on in the year because apparently Kobe Bryant did the same thing that Michael Jordan did mm-hmm. and had his entire last season filmed behind the scenes, yeah. basically. So we might have another one of those coming out, yeah. which would be interesting, but not nearly as interesting as the Jordan one, because that was at peak fame. Yeah, like Kobe was done by then, basically. But he did drop sixty in that final game. So he did, cool. yeah, but they weren't like competing for a title or anything. No, no, it's a, it's a different kind of story, but it'll be good. Mamba out. Yeah, you, hey, you know what we're into now is uh, this show called Dave. Um, it's about Lil Dicky, Lil Dicky on yeah. FX. Have you seen that? I've seen the first few episodes. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. I, yes, I can is. see you doing something like this, where you're the lead of a show like that, and it's about your everyday life as a musician and what you go through. I want, um, I want to. That's essentially what it is. Everything I've ever been cast in has been very not comedy. And I don't know why, but I've been. T- yeah, you, you'd be great in it, man. I feel like I, 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 really I, yeah. I want to do a Step Brothers, but just people are like, nah, <clears throat> not buying it. <laughs> I like how you're saying that. And you're missing. You've just <laughs> shaved out the middle part of your beard. Maybe when this was here, like people would be like, "Yeah, I don't see it." And now they're like, "Yeah, this guy's an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has got to be one of the shows you turn into, tune into on video. Go to uh, Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube and subscribe to this and check it out. Danny, this is the point of the show. We get to the Drinking Bro of the Week. You know it well. You've given away a couple. Uh, who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to this Ooh, week? Drinking bro of the week. Listen, this may be a little cheesy, but I think I'm going to have to give it to Victoria, my wife, mm. for putting up with me for all of this time. Because I, uh, I'm, I'm very fun. I'm a very, very fun guy. People are like, oh, is that guy a mushroom? Nope, just a fun guy. Um in very small doses, in very small <laughs> doses, and she's and she's stuck with me. And she's retired now. Uh, she just retired from the navy, and um, she, uh, yeah, she she's she's been putting up with a lot of I'm a lot, and she's been putting up with it. So I'm, I'm gonna give I'm, I'm, it's gonna be a bro ed of the week, and it's gonna be Victoria. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, where'd you guys get married? Was it on a beach? No, no we got, they were in fucking. They went to uh, New Zealand. Game of Thrones. They had to get married. No, no, it was it was Lord of the Rings. We got we got married on top of a mountain. Oh, Lord of the Rings, yeah, in yeah, New Zealand. Sorry. Do you have a background that would match that right now on New Zealand? <laughs> I can find one. 
<laughs> that was the segue I was looking for to end the show. I would love to, to end you on a, on a real uh, fun Well, let's background. talk about the, the album. Yeah, well, of course. But I want to I see this background. This is, this is the thing that I don't get to do every day. So, <laughs> Like a house on fire.co, you can buy the album. Yes. Pre-order now. Pre-order now. And the, the focus that you're taking on finding I know, is, you, you care a lot more about this background <laughs> than you do about selling your goddamn product. Uh, I love it. No, I love it. Well, I because li- I'm, I am well aware of, tw- I've been doing this for a long time now. I know no one's going to buy shit. <laughs> 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 we can tell them about it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you. I'm. I'm so glad the internet cannot see my fucking search history. <laughs> oh man. Oh, imagine? how? What's your porn like these days? How graphic is that? It's. It's not. But I did just. I. I. I had to stop because it got really intense really fast. But I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna accidentally put up the uh, the picture of that black guy sat down with his dick out. Yeah. Ah, oh, you could have. You could have done that. I know. You done that. I. I know, and I was. But can you imagine what my Google search was for it? Black guy long dick, and he he wasn't the fir- he wasn't the first one up. I feel like I was braced for that one, <laughs> and that one wasn't even on the first page. And it was just it was a lot to the system. <laughs> mm-hmm. I tell you what, put it up, and we'll have our editors blur it out. Well, I, I couldn't even find it; it wasn't there. Mm. So type in right now. We'll just do it as a as a fun thing for okay. our YouTube watchers. <laughs> type in black guy long dick. Whatever the first image is, just up, the first put image. that in the background, and then. We'll have them blurred out. <laughs> the first, the first one looks photoshopped, definitely. But uh, Jamie, mark this, mark the time code for <laughs> Ibby, so that way he can blur out this this huge long dick, so we don't get yeah. banned from YouTube. So, uh, this is me and my oh. wife getting married. Oh no, wait, no, not that one. <laughs> honest, <laughs> honest mistake, guys. Honest mistake. <laughs> I feel like maybe this is this is where it was looking. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at that. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So that's where you guys get married. Can that's you switch us. it back to the di- the black dick, though? Yep. There we <laughs> go. There we go. Very nice. Look at how angry that guy is. Like, he's a mover. You he, know? Lo- he looks like maybe uh, someone has messed his shirt up, and now he's angry about it. No, he looks like he's been moving all day, <laughs> and he's just like, I told you to turn the air conditioning on. It's hot in here. Pivot! Mm. Hot. Pivot! <laughs> That's going to be, <laughs> here's the thing I've just realized, that's going to be on my Zoom account for forever, and I don't want to know the meetings that I'm going to accidentally hit that on. Yeah, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, if, tell everybody about the album, Danny, where they can get it. The album is called Like a House on Fire. Uh, it is available wherever music is purchased, primarily uh, askingalexandria.com, um, but you can also pre-order it from iTunes, Spotify, all those good places. Um, there is new Danny Wassup music coming, there's new We Are Harlot music coming, uh, and until then, uh, I actually dropped a new Danny Wassup song a little while ago that was for my tour that got cancelled uh, it's called Happy and that is available on the internet hell yeah and when can we expect a completed uh, version of Tiger King song um, just as soon as I decide whether I'm a sound bad or he's gonna sound bad <laughs> I'd go with him no I'm I'd pro- go with him I'm, I, I'm, I'm probably just gonna do it on my phone I'll figure it out all right, perfect, perfect. Uh, we'll put the link in the description for the audio show mm-hmm. uh, as well as the video for where you can get Danny's new album. Uh, the lead single, The Violence, is uh, just an absolute yeah. fucking banger, dude. Um, I feel like it's been a hit for 10 years already. Well, that's because the last two months have felt like 10 years. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It, what, it came out late 2019, right? Yeah, the very end of December. So, so, it, so it's been out, what, five or six months now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the, the album so far, the first four songs that I've heard have been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, congratulations, Danny. Please keep putting out amazing albums. Uh, we need you in this world, especially in times like these, my man. I'm going to keep trying. I, 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 good luck I can promise, wife. if nothing else, to put out albums. I can't promise they'll <laughs> all be great, but I'm going to try. <laughs> Uh, and leave the beard like that. I'm gonna uh, subscribe to Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube to see this whole fuckery of an episode. <laughs> uh, it's always great having you for Danny Warsnap, uh, Danthony, Danthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Drinking Bros.